the lovely community of Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, has been a prominent neighborhood for well over a century. It started as a sacred hunting ground to becoming a small farming community, to the place where the very wealthy lived, to having one of the largest Jewish communities in the United States. It has been a place of hope and prosperity, and unfortunately the site of some terrible tragedies. And in this episode of the fascinating histories and stories of our neighborhoods, we will look at the remarkable and interesting story of the lovely, diverse and striking neighborhood of Squirrel Hill. The neighborhood of Squirrel Hill sits on a hill, above the city, which has been the main reason for its prominence. Centuries before the first white settlers arrived to the area, the Iroquois considered this hill to be sacred hunting grounds, as it was rich in game. There was also a salt lick near the river, that attracted wildlife. Because squirrels were so numerous on the hill, the indigenous peoples gave the hill the name of Squirrel Hill. The first white people to come to the area were French and British trappers. But it wasn't until after the end of the French and Indian War that the first European settlers came to the area, as they were lured in by free land and the plentiful game. These settlers were mainly British and German. They took over tracts of land and began farming the area. But their infiltration of this sacred land caused skirmishes with the indigenous peoples. A land office was opened in 1769, giving legality to the lands the settlers took from the indigenous peoples. At the same time, tracts of land were reserved for the natives. But despite all of this, the skirmishes continued with the natives and the white settlers, to well past the end of the Revolutionary War. Eventually the natives were displaced from their once sacred hunting ground, and they were sent west, while more white settlers moved into the area. The first log house was built in 1760, by Colonel James Byrd, when he was stationed at Fort Pitt. He called his property Somerset. Two more log cabins were built shortly after, by Ambrose Newton. These log cabin homes still stand in Shenley Park. They are called the Martin House and the Robert Neal House, and are considered the oldest houses in Pittsburgh. An early settler of the neighborhood, a widow named Mary Gertie Turner, came to Squirrel Hill in 1764 with her five sons. Prior to her arrival, Mary's family had been abducted by the natives, and the family had been separated from each other for a time. She managed to escape her capture, and was able to reunite with almost all her sons, except for her son, John. She eventually found him at Squirrel Hill, and it was there, that the entire family finally reunited. Mary's eldest sons, Simon and George Gertie, who were from her first marriage, then purchased land in Squirrel Hill. Simon soon became a leader of the Mingo Indian tribe. He and the Mingo Indians became allied with the British during the Revolutionary War, and Simon defected to Britain during the war. He used his knowledge of the frontier to attack white settlements. When Britain lost the war, he and two of his brothers fled to Canada, in an effort to prevent being imprisoned, for what was considered treasonous acts. John Turner then inherited the 140-acre land that his two brothers left behind. He called his farm on that land, Federal Hill. He later bequeathed this land to the community of Squirrel Hill, for it to be used as a cemetery. It became known as Turner Graveyard, and some of the earliest settlers still lie there. By the early 1800s, a small settlement started developing, on what is known as Browns Hill Road. It was there, that William Killy Moon Stewart, built an inn and tavern, where weary travelers could get refreshments on their long journeys, and where they could stay overnight. The tavern remained part of the community, until it was demolished in 1949. By the mid-1800s, the city of Pittsburgh began to see a great boon in industry. This boon created a new crop of wealthy industrialists. With this newfound wealth, these industrialists began looking at the prime land located on Squirrel Hill. The land, that was at one time used primarily for farming, was the perfect location to build the great estates, to showcase the grandeur of their newly gained wealth. 
They began building their mansions in the northern part of Squirrel Hill, along Fifth Avenue, which soon was known as Millionaire's Row. It became a great representation of the opulence of the Gilded Age. Among the great industrialists to build their estates in Squirrel Hill and on Millionaire's Row was South Penn oil executive John Worthington and also Thomas Howe, a member of the Whig Party, who served in Congress in the mid-1800s. One of the grand mansions on Millionaire's Row, the Berry Mansion, that was located on Woodland Avenue, became the first home of Chatham University. Chatham University was founded in 1869 as the Pennsylvania Female College. It was later renamed the Pennsylvania College for Women. Eventually, several other owners of these great mansions bequeathed their estates to the college, and Chatham grew in the neighborhood, utilizing these mansions as buildings for the growing and expanding university. Also in 1869, the clubhouse of the Pittsburgh Golf Club was built on what was a former farmhouse, and it became the Shenley Park Golf Course. But the first major change to the Squirrel Hill area came in 1893, with the arrival of the first electric trolley. The trolley helped to develop the neighborhood, as it ran along Forbes Avenue and Murray Avenue. The trolley built a much-needed line to the growing steel factories of Homestead and with Pittsburgh's East End. The trolley then brought the growth of more lovely, large homes that were built for middle management of those who worked in the booming steel industry. These houses were not as large as the great estates on Millionaire's Row, but were still very much part of a deepening, affluent neighborhood as Squirrel Hill remained. By the early 1900s, more houses were built in the neighborhood. Some of the homes in this newer residential development included the home of the famous author, Willa Cather, who lived in Squirrel Hill from 1901 to 1906. At the time, Cather was the drama critic for the Pittsburgh Leader newspaper, and she taught school at Central High School, and eventually became the head of the English department at Allegheny High School. Though she was known for being a Midwesterner, her time in Pittsburgh and Squirrel Hill gave her much inspiration. She used the city as a background for several of her popular short stories. She became very well known with her novels, such as O oh Pioneers and The Song of the Lark. Her home still stands on Murray Hill. Shenley Park was donated to Pittsburgh and the Squirrel Hill neighborhood in 1889 by heiress Mary Shenley. Mary Shenley was the granddaughter of one of Pittsburgh's leading pioneers and landowners, General James O'Hara. She became part of a very scandalous elopement to a British captain by the name of Edward Shenley. This elopement was Captain Shenley's third, and after it was completed, the couple escaped on a British Navy ship to England. Mary was only 16 at the time of the elopement, and she was attending a very prominent boarding school in Staten Island in New York, when she eloped with Captain Shenley. The scandal brought on by this elopement caused the boarding school to go bankrupt, and also brought the action of the federal government to dispatch the Coast Guard to find the errant couple. Mary was not welcomed in England either, and was even spurned by Queen Victoria for her scandalous actions. But she remained in England, and had a large family with Captain Shenley, but she always longed for her hometown. Captain Shenley despised Pittsburgh and Squirrel Hill, so because of that, Mary only visited it a few times throughout her lifetime. Mary's father died in 1850, shortly after her marriage, and she inherited a large sum, mostly of real estate in the Squirrel Hill area. Part of the land was called the Point, which because of neglect on her part, had become a slum area. She was highly criticized for being an absentee slum landlord, due to the nature of the condition of this area. To salve her conscience, she donated part of her land for the site of West Penn Hospital, Western Pennsylvania Institute for the Blind, the Newsboys Home, a $10,000 subscription for Riverview Park, and a gift of the blockhouse at the point to the Daughters of the American Revolution. But her largest gift to the area came after the death of Captain Shenley in 1889. For decades, the city of Pittsburgh had its eyes on the Shenley land for a park in Oakland. 
Edward Bigelow, the man considered the father of Pittsburgh Parks, convinced Mary to donate her family's land for the city's use. She donated the land under two stipulations, that a park be built that was named after her, and that the land would never be sold. With that agreement in hand, Shenley Park was created. Frick Park was created on the eastern side of Squirrel Hill in 1927, when controversial Carnegie Steel executive, Henry Clay Frick, bequeathed 151 acres of mostly undeveloped land, to the neighborhood, after his death in 1919. The 1920s saw another boom in the Squirrel Hill neighborhood, with the development of the automobile, and the construction of the Boulevard of the Allies. This new roadway helped to link Squirrel Hill to downtown Pittsburgh. This time the increase of population consisted mostly of European Jews, that moved from other areas of the city to the Squirrel Hill neighborhood. But unlike the previous residents of this affluent neighborhood, these newcomers were not nearly as wealthy. They soon began building smaller brick homes, and put in kosher butcher shops, delicatessens, Jewish restaurants, bookstores, and a variety of other Jewish-owned businesses. And by the mid-1930s, the majority of land in Squirrel Hill was now filled with homes, shops and parks. By the 1940s, and going forward, Squirrel Hill became the center of Pittsburgh's Jewish community. In fact almost a third of the entire Jewish population of Pittsburgh lives in Squirrel Hill, or the bordering communities. What makes this Jewish community so unusual is that Squirrel Hill is one of the few outering neighborhoods of a major city, where the Jewish population did not migrate to the suburbs, but rather stayed within city limits. Most other large Jewish communities have not done the same, in other cities in the United States. Most other Jewish communities from other cities, have chosen to build their communities in the suburbs. So that makes the Jewish community of Squirrel Hill very unique in this respect. Unfortunately, the vibrancy of the Jewish community of Squirrel Hill has not made it immune from anti-Semitic attacks throughout the years. One terrible episode came in April 1986, when a rabbinical student by the name of Neil Rosenblum, who was visiting from Toronto, was killed near his in-law's house in Squirrel Hill. For a long while, no one was arrested for the murder, and the case went cold. But then a prisoner, by the name of Stephen Tielsch, was arrested in 2000, for this heinous crime, after he bragged to fellow prison inmates that he murdered a Jew. He was convicted for the murder of Neil Rosenblum in 2002. But the worst of these anti-Semitic attacks came on October 27, 2018, when a lone, armed gunman, entered the Tree of Life synagogue during their morning services, and opened fire, shooting for around 20 minutes with his AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, killing 11 people. Among the victims were two brothers and a married couple. A SWAT team was dispatched to the synagogue, and they shot the gunman several times. He surrendered, and admitted to the head of the SWAT team, that all he wanted to do was kill Jews. The mass shooting brought a great deal of attention to this prominent, close-knit, and quiet community. There was a great deal of outrage about this mass shooting, not only in Pittsburgh and the country, but throughout the world. Hundreds of people held vigils for the victims of the shooting, and both the Eiffel Tower and the Empire State Building darkened their lights, to honor the fallen victims, as well as to honor the congregation of the Tree of Life Synagogue. The mass shooting put an emphasis on the darkening rhetoric of the politics of the nation, which has caused more division in the country. It placed a very stark light on this increasing problem. Still, in spite of this terrible event, the community of Squirrel Hill has kept strong, and remains positive and united, though forever touched deeply by what has disturbed the close-knit community. Squirrel Hill has had its share of very famous personalities that once lived in the community. Just some include the following. Actor and stand-up comedian, Marty Allen. Comic book illustrator, Steve Lieber. Movie and film composer, Jerry Fielding. Journalist, Howard Feynman. Pittsburgh Steelers head coach, Mike Tomlin. Broadway director, Rob Marshall. 
Nickelodeon television executive, Janice Burgess. Journalist, Bari Weiss. Sally Lapidus, writer for popular shows like Ellen, Family Matters, The Nanny and Mad About You. Maxine Lapidus, comedy writer for shows like Dharma and Greg, Roseanne, and Home Improvement. And Fred Rogers, best known to the world in his role as Mr. Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Squirrel Hill has remained one of the loveliest neighborhoods, not only in Pittsburgh, but in the United States. It reveals the layers of its fascinating history through the stock of its lovely homes, its beautiful parks, the educational facilities of Carnegie Mellon and Chatham University, and through the Jewish community and the others who remain very tied to this close-knit neighborhood. It has been and still is, an excellent community to call home. If you are in Pittsburgh, you need to stop over and visit Squirrel Hill, and you will see why it is such an incredible and fascinating neighborhood. Thank you for watching this episode of the fascinating history and stories of our neighborhoods. We want to thank all of our wonderful subscribers, and ask that if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, to please do so, and to please click the notification button to get notified when we drop new videos like this one. If you would like to see a specific neighborhood included in a future episode, please send your ideas to this email, and if we use your idea, then we will give you a shout out in that video. Also, if you liked this video, please hit the like button, and please share it with others, so we can continue to build our channel. Our goal is to reach 5,000 subscribers, and we can only do that with your help. Thanks again, and keep looking out for new videos in the near future.